Welcome to the channel dear friends. Today I want to tell you about the movie, District 9. Watch out for spoilers. In an alternate 1982, a giant extraterrestrial spaceship arrives on Earth and hovers over the South African city of Johannesburg. After three months of inactivity, human investigators find over one million malnourished aliens, and the South African government relocates them to a terrestrial camp called District 9. However, over the years, it has turned into a slum, and locals from Earth often complain that the aliens are filthy, ignorant lawbreakers who bleed resources from humans. Conflicts between humans and aliens have become more frequent. The aliens do not understand the laws of humans and behave rudely. 28 years later, in 2010, after unrest between aliens and locals, the government hires a major arms manufacturer, Multinational United MNU, to relocate the aliens to a new camp outside the city. The executive director of MNU assigns employee Wickus van der Merwe to supervise the relocation. Wickus is a simple-minded man, but he is very excited about his new position. Many are not happy about his leadership. The military is sent to District 9 to relocate the aliens. Everyone is ready for the procedure to evict the 1.8 million aliens from the city. The military moves into District 9. The operation begins. Wickus and the military try to peacefully evict the aliens, but they only show aggression. One alien voluntarily agrees in exchange for a can of cat food. The aliens on the ship appear to be primitive workers, and the command has mysteriously disappeared. The area has also become a ghetto where local gangs sell cat food to the aliens and sell weapons. The aliens have a variety of weapons, despite their small size some can do enormous destruction. The organization wanted to use the weapons, but it turns out they don't work, interacting only with the aliens' DNA. The three aliens search for the necessary part and then conduct an experiment in a makeshift lab. Wickus and the military arrive at that very house. One alien leaves while the other distracts. A search of the house reveals a hidden laboratory, where Wickus accidentally finds a certain alien technological artifact, a small metal cylinder. While trying to open the cylinder, Wickus splashes himself with the black liquid inside. They then find a room full of weapons, the apprehended alien attacks, but is killed. Wickus injures his left arm, on which he is bandaged. They arrive at the escaped alien, whose name is Christopher. He refuses to sign a document, Wickus becomes ill. On his return to town, Wickus experiences symptoms of severe malaise. The locals, in addition to trading weapons, kill aliens and sell organs, and many eat in hopes of gaining abilities. Wickus gets sick and returns home, but his loved ones throw a promotion party. Wickus gets worse and worse. At the hospital, when the bandage is opened, the doctor discovers that the arm has transformed into a three-fingered alien hand. Wickus is forcibly and without explanation transferred to the MNU laboratory. It later becomes clear that this transformation is caused by contact with the liquid contents of the container. Forcibly, against Wickus' will, scientists study the ability to control alien weapons, MNU specialists discover that Wickus' transformation has given him the ability to use alien technology, including against the aliens themselves. MNU leadership decides to dissect Wickus as soon as possible and extract the mutated tissues, cells and organs that are the potential key to billions in profits. Wickus is prepared to be dissected, but he manages to break free and escape from the lab. MNU organizes a campaign to capture him. To prevent humans from helping Wickus, the media claims that Wickus van der Merwe is a sexual pervert and has acquired a dangerous and contagious disease after having sex with aliens. 31 hours have passed since the infection, and Wickus has been trying to contact his wife, but to no avail. He continues to be searched for, a desperate Wickus hides in a place where he will not be looked for, District 9. Waking up, Wickus goes to get food, he also shows a craving for cat food, just like the aliens. He notices that his teeth have begun to fall out. His wife calls him, she has been indoctrinated by his father that Wickus is obsessed with aliens and she doesn't want to see him. Wickus decides to chop off his mutated hand, but only chops off his finger. While trying to escape helicopter raids, Wickus bursts into the home of the alien Christopher and his young son. 
Begging to hide him, Wickus loses consciousness, and Christopher notices the altered hand. Concluding that such a metamorphosis could only have been caused by a lost artifact, Christopher decides to shelter Wickus. Christopher tries to find out from Wickus the location of the container of liquid necessary for the functioning of the command module, which has been assembled over 20 years from the remains of various alien machines and artifacts. Christopher promises Wickus that he can use the medical equipment on the ship hovering over Johannesburg to stop the transformation and reverse the process, making Wickus human. However, this is impossible without the fluid container, and the container is left in the MNU laboratory. Wickus notices that his body tissue is dying off and being replaced by alien tissue. His wife calls him again, he believes him and wants him back. He promises to heal and return to her, but the conversation is overheard. Wickus goes to see Christopher, he agrees to help get the fluid. Guns are needed, so Wickus goes to the local mafia. The paralyzed head of the mafia, upon seeing Wickus's mutated hand, becomes envious and orders him to cut it off in order to eat it and get the hand himself. However, Wickus manages to get hold of an alien weapon from the bandits' arsenal, and threatening them, he departs with the weapon. The military arrives at Christopher's house, but finds no one. Wickus and Christopher, the two of them break into MNU headquarters and infiltrate the lab, where they kill the guard who opened fire in a firefight. They find the container, but Christopher notices the mutilated bodies of his kin. Wickus manages to make him come to his senses with thoughts of his son. Eventually they manage to escape and return to Area 9 with the container. Christopher informs Wickus that, contrary to his promise to return Wickus to human form, he has decided to fly to his home planet first on a rescue mission for his tribesmen. He informs them that he cannot allow his tribesmen to be tortured and medically experimented on, and that the rescue mission will take three years to complete. Wickus stuns his alien companion in despair and, with the help of his young son Christopher, lifts the command module into the air himself. A missile launcher at the edge of District 9 shoots down the module already in the air, and Colonel Kubis captures Wickus. Wickus and Christopher are taken outside District 9 in MNU armored vehicles, but a mob gang attacks and kidnaps Wickus. While there is a firefight outside, Wickus is prepared to be killed and eaten. Christopher's son on the command module activates the ship's control systems. The mothership hovering over the city comes into motion and flies toward the command module. Triggering the mothership systems causes the alien artifacts, including the exoskeleton, to become combat ready, recognizes the mutant Wickus as his, attacked by the aliens, and protects him by shooting the bandits. The freed Wickus uses the combat exoskeleton to escape, leaving Christopher in the hands of Colonel Kubis, but after coming to his senses, he returns and engages the military in combat. Under his cover of Wickus, Christopher makes it to the command module. The military still manages to severely damage Wickus' exoskeleton and injure him. Christopher gives Wickus his word that he will return for him in three years. Wickus continues to fight off the military. Christopher and his son successfully take off and dock the module with the ship. The surviving colonel tries to kill Wickus, who has mutated even more than before but Wickus is protected by alien slum dwellers, tearing the colonel apart and eating him. Christopher activates the mothership and flies away. The inhabitants of Johannesburg look on with rapturous eyes. The film ends with news clippings. Wickus van der Merwe has never been found, he may have flown away in a ship or fallen into the hands of some corporation or government, his relatives consider him dead. Data on MNU's illegal genetic research has been discovered and a trial is now pending against the company. The aliens relocated to Area 10. Wickus S. Widow, Tanya Van de Merwe, has had a strange gift planted under her door, a rose assembled from metal scraps. She doesn't believe it's a gift from her missing husband. We see Wickus picking up the rose, which has already permanently mutated. This is where the film ends, District 9. A very interesting film about the interaction between humans and aliens. Thanks for watching and good luck.